There it goes. Well, um, hey, uh, family and friends that are tuning in with us via live stream, we say welcome. Um, uh, I'm Pastor Brad Sheets, Live Church in uh, Hartzell, Alabama, and uh, we got some incredible couples here with us uh, that is going to be a part of uh, Family Fest Conversation, something we've been doing for the last three weeks during a message series that we have here at Life Church called Family Fest, where um, we're talking about marriage, we're talking about parenting, we're talking about uh, healthy family dynamics, uh, because we believe that's what God wants for um, for families, that it's the dynamic and the, the um, fabric of strength in our society today. And uh, so tonight, we have a very, very special uh, conversation that we're going to have talking about how to make love last for the long journey, that marriage is not a sprint, but marriage is a marathon, and that you go through all the seasons of life, and, um, and that there's joy and there's fun at the end. And so you see the smiles on these two couples' faces, and uh, it's because they're, they are full of joy, and uh, they've raised kids, and uh, the Lenses have grandkids now, and, and uh, um, the Timmons, we're not quite there yet, but, but uh, y'all will one day have grandkids, right? Uh, and so we, uh, I want them to introduce yourself, take just a few seconds, and then we're going to jump into some questions uh, where they're just going to talk to us about uh, staying in love for the long haul, staying in love and making a marriage last, uh, and still loving each other at the, <laughs> as, at, the, at the second half of your marriage, right? And uh, so good deal. So t uh, Ted and Danny, you guys are on my first one on my left. So tell me your family dynamic, about 15, 20 seconds, uh, about the Timmons family. What do y'all look like? We are Ted and Dana Timmons. We're, we've been married uh, 31 years. This year, wow. I'm 32. So um, we have two kids that are uh, lower 20s. One is married, one is not. Um, they're on their own. So, um, and that's kind of where we're at right now. We're, we've, uh, we've actually got one home still, but so we're not quite empty nesters. We're getting there, but not quite. <laughs> You're close, right? Good deal. All right, Lenses, tell us your family dynamic. Well, we, uh, I'm Ron Lentz. This is my wife, Linda. We've been married 50 years this June the 8th. Wow. Uh, yeah, we have uh, three girls, and uh, two are married, one is single, and we have six. He's having to count. Come on, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to keep up with everybody. I hear you. I hear you. Anyway, we feel very blessed and uh, looking forward to another 50 years. Absolutely awesome. And both of y'all, um, I'll speak from my point of view. I've watched both of these couples, and uh, I love watching the way that y'all interact um, uh, as a couple and your love for one another. Um, and that you are still in love. And that's why I asked y'all to be a part of this panel um, because y'all don't tolerate each other, you celebrate each other. And uh, y'all um, really model for, um, you know, maybe those who have been married five years, 10 years, um, that you, you model the fact that it just gets better with time. Um, and so uh, I've heard people say that. I'm still, uh, Aaron and I are still on this journey raising kids and, and uh, uh, it gets better with time for us, but um, that day that we get to celebrate some of that. So we're going to jump into some questions. I'll let you guys pick um, who wants to answer it, and uh, then we'll just kind of keep the conversation going. First question I have for you guys is, what has been your secret to staying in love for the long haul? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, it got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. We got to get the ball rolling. So, all right. So, who's going to talk to you first? Go ahead. Well, I, I think um, for us, it's it's the respect for each other and realizing that you know we're different in a lot of ways. Uh, and after fifty years, you begin to realize you're different in a lot of ways. But you find those things that you're alike, or that you like doing together. And, and you try to focus on the, the positives and not the negatives. You know, things begin to fester right. if, you, if you let them. And so 
you know, the little things when you first get married, if you don't take care of the little things, those little things will keep building up. And so we tried to look for the, the positives right. in, in our marriage. That's good. That's good. And Linda, you want to add anything to that? Um, I think a lot of it, too, is doing what the other person wants to do instead right. of being so selfish about it. Wow. So I think that um, take myself out of it and do what, be considerate of what he wants to do. Right. And in the long run, it comes back that we're both happy. Right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Ted and Dana. I think, um, I think it's accepting um, your spouse where they're at. They, we we all grow differently. We were a lot different when we got mm -hmm. married. So I know that's another question probably later, but we, uh, we know we're different and uh, we, we've grown in different areas of our life. So just accepting that person where they're at and, and helping them grow to where they, you know, they need to be. I think that's, uh, for me, that's been a big part of, of staying in love with Dana, just trying to Accept her where she's at. Know that you know she's not not done yet, and the Lord's not <laughs> done with her. And so, <laughs> and so, uh, so I'm excited to see what He's got for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. And I think too, though, you take on each other's characteristics wow. as the years pass. You know, which is which really helps. Right. Yeah, and it's and it's realizing we're we're broken people coming together. And, and a lot of times we don't like to realize, I know in Aaron and I's journey that we've had, sometimes I like to think I'm perfect and she's not, or <laughs> she thinks she's perfect and I'm not. And, uh, but realizing that, that we all have our quirks, we all have our differences, we all have our, um, our things that maybe gets on each other. Like I can't stand smacking, you know, that's the, the silliest thing in the world, but it like, it gets under my skin. So we all got quirks that, that can bother each other. And I think that those small, you know, scripture even says a small fox is, uh, is what will rob and steal. We've got to keep those small things and cultivate, cultivate that love. So we're going to talk more about that love uh, and keeping it cultivated, but we're going to keep going with questions here. All right. So number two, uh, Ted, I'm going to let you guys start first with this one. How have each of you changed over the years? Wow. Um, over the years. <clears throat> Well, I've gotten better looking. <laughs> um, that's that's about it. Really. Uh, no, we uh, over the years, man, we, we've changed. You know, we've had our ups and downs, and uh, uh, we've learned a lot from each season in our life. And we've, you know, I think we've grown from that that and um, learned to appreciate each other more through each season. So. Um, you know, I, I think when I was younger and and being freshly married, maybe uh, had some expectations that weren't realistic. And so we had to grow through those. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, so I think, you know, we've matured. We've learned, just learned to accept each other more, I think, uh, as we've gotten older and appreciate each other more uh, for who we are and what our what our real inner person is as we learned it, as we learn that inner person. So yeah, that's good. Good. Ron Linda. Well, you know, I guess when we first got married, we were just kind of young and stupid and now we're <laughs> old and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you kind of, uh, you, you kind of learn to get to know each other. Right. Um, I think when we first got married, one of the things that Ted mentioned is we came from different backgrounds, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and so we each had to adapt some, yeah. um, you know, I came from a family that we were open and we talked and we just, you know, my parents didn't consider it talking back. If we, if we had a disagreement, as long as we disagreed agreeably Yeah. and Linda's and in Linda's family, basically go to your room and shut up kind of. Yeah. So it, it took a while for us to be able to develop a dialogue Right. And, and communicate properly with each other. Yeah. That's good. Good. Was there anything, and either either one of y'all can answer this, anything, because um, this is one of the aspects I've watched many walk through that 
you get really frustrated. Anything that used to really, really frustrate you and aggravate you that now you realize it's not a mountain worth dying on or it's not something worth fighting about or, um, you know, just kind of just go, uh, I don't let this bother me anymore. Uh, it ain't necessarily character flaw by any means, but just personality trait or um, anything like that you could speak to. Well, I can speak to that. Um, <laughs> okay. I can remember when we first got married and um, talking about the smacking, that's one of my things too. And it was my dad's thing. So I guess that kind of carried over with me is that's just something you don't do. And right. in Ron's family, they were okay with that. Right. And he loved to chomp on ice and that just <laughs> bugged the heck out of me. <laughs> right. so, early on in marriage, I was trying to get him to see things my way. Don't crunch your eyes. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. And he said to me, he said, you did not marry me to change me. Wow. And that has stuck with me. Right. And so we don't marry someone to change them. Right. Wow. That's good. That's good. That causes frustration. We try to change. Mm -hmm. We try to change the other person for sure. You Dead can't, man. You can't oh, yeah. change people. You can't. <laughs> no. Yeah. As, as believers, we know truly the only change that ever manifests is, is when we allow the Holy Spirit to transform yeah. us. We allow the presence of God to change us. Um, and that's usually we have frustrations that manifest uh, in marriage and or any relationship because we want to change. And it ends up being manipulation. And you can never manipulate somebody into change because there won't be any longevity mm -hmm. uh, attached to it. Uh, so, um, Well, I, can I just say something, yeah. an example of, of that? When we first got married, uh, my dad, growing up, my dad was one that could fix anything. He, he ne we never paid for anything to be repaired or anything. I mean, it was a, bl a blow from a blow dryer to a refrigerator. It didn't matter. It's kind of like you and your dad. Yeah. And um, I used to tell Ted all the time, man, I wish, wish you could be like my dad. Why can't you fix it like my dad? But I mean, it, it really bothered me for a long time that he couldn't do that. But you know, he, it's okay. He, yeah. he said, I'm not your dad. <laughs> right. and, and he's very teachable. And, you know, he didn't have that same kind of father right. and to, to do those things. So it, it is definitely, definitely um, been, you know, it's something to, <laughs> right. to get used to, but, but, you know, he, he, he does stuff. He, it may take him three days, three but he'll do it, you know, 10 times awesome. longer than anybody else. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Here, here's one of the things I hear you guys saying. And um, uh, as I was studying this past week, which I'll give a little bit snippet uh, with that, if, if you are not uh, here or you're not around where Life Church is your church, home, or family, I'd encourage you to go back and watch the YouTube. Uh, for those watching live stream right now, go back and watch the YouTube from this past Sunday. We talked about marriage, but just in a real simple, basic format. And one of the things that stuck out to me in Genesis 2 when God created Eve literally the it could um very easily in context and in interpretation he gave eve as a gift to adam it's almost that that language and i think that really is a key of longevity so aaron and i've been 23 we're 23 years married uh, not as long as as both of you guys but when i look through the lens to say my spouse is a gift from god and uh and that it's not my job to change them my job to be in covenant with them and love them as a three strand accord with Christ. Uh, that's really some of what I was hearing y'all say is accept them at, for the personality, accept them with the strengths and weaknesses, accept them where they're at and, mm -hmm. uh, and then grow together uh, with that. So I think that's, that's, that's awesome. All right. So number three uh, question and Lance will let you start this one. What advice would you give a 22 year old you? Were y'all married at 22? Yes. Okay. Yes. What advice um, would you give a 22 year old you? That was very easy for me to answer. I would be less selfish. Wow. I think that, um, especially at that, that young age, I think that for me, I was very selfish and wanted things my way. Right. And uh, it, it just takes a while. <laughs> yeah several years to get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm still going. I'm still I'm still working on it. But I'll give the advice it's be selfless. Right. That's good. Ron, how would you answer that one? 
<laughs> well, I used to tell, <laughs> in, in the Asian tell, I said, you know, there's there's more than one way of doing something, and neither one are necessarily wrong. Right. <laughs> you can yeah. you can go at something two different ways. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but I would I would say to uh, to have confidence in yourself. At 22, I probably lacked some confidence in where we were going and what we could be doing and it was probably a little flightier than I should have been right. and maybe wanted to get in some get rich quick schemes you know just things <laughs> that, and yeah. then you realize that it, like marriage it, things are a marathon not a sprint and it just takes time yeah good Ted and Dana thank you want me to go first <laughs> We were not married at 22, mm -hmm. um, so I was single, but, um, you know, I, I think for, at that point for me, it was just, um, if I had to tell myself something, it would just be, you know, be patient. Um, the Lord has good things in store for you, and, um, but you got to be patient. It, you know, it goes back to the marathon thing, so, um you know, to work on your relationship with him and then he'll bring things yeah. into fruition that he wants you to have and not uh, not rush through things, so. Because yeah. he has a plan. <laughs> he does. What would you tell a 22-year-old Dana? I was thinking along the same lines as him, but um, I guess what I would say is um, don't let uh, little things get to you. Don't the things that that I used to get so worked up about in in general in life um, now things don't matter as much you know don't let little things consume you but just you know just take it for what it is it's yeah, good 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 here we go number four did your marriage change as you went through different seasons of your life so in specifically here this question especially as you went through children raising children toddler teenager college age uh changing jobs you know the lenses y'all changed geographical locations uh, so that was major shifts in the season of life how how did your marriage change and the dynamic of your marriage and communication and all those aspects as you went through different seasons you want to take it first well of course it changes through the seasons of life because first you're 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 um newly married, no children, uh, trying to get to know each other at that age, making a lot of mistakes and trying to forgive the other one. And um, then come the children and you have to definitely focus on them. Um, they just demand your time. Um, but during that season and during that, that change, we have to learn to also focus on each other. And that, I think that was one of the learning curves for us is to learn during the season of children to learn to focus on each other because in the end, as we are right now, children are not there to take up our time. And we still have to love one another after the children. Right. And so you have to continue that relationship uh, throughout the raising of the children and through that season of life. Right. So yes, Every, every season, there's a change and you have to learn to adapt. But I think the most important thing is, is come out on the other side, still knowing who you're married to and who you love. It's good. It's good. Dana and Ted. Well, I think um, in the seasons of life, they, you know, they bring a lot of, that brings a lot of things, disappointment. It just depends on what it is. It, there's joy. There's, there's all kinds of things. Um, but through each season of your life, you you grow and you learn more about each other. And so without those seasons, you know, where would we be? You know, would we we'd still be we'll probably still be happily singly married with no kids. <laughs> <Super high>. <laughs> <laughs> and have lots of money. <laughs> no. But but those seasons are important, you know. That's yeah, awesome. Help you grow and appreciate the other one more, depending on how you react in those seasons. So, you know, I would say a lot of a lot of who you come out on the other side is is how you react in those seasons and and how you appreciate your spouse and and uh, and treat them during during tough seasons and during good seasons. That, 
it, it can't be selfish. It's got to be, you've got to think of them in each season. And yeah. uh, again, appreciate where they're at in, yeah. in their, in their life. Cause we're, um, you know, we're all different in each season of our life, spiritually mm -hmm. and physically and emotionally. Um, so, you know, it's just how you treat that person in that season. I, I want to chase a small rabbit right here. How, how do you practically pursue your spouse? I'm going to use the word pursue um, to echo what both of you are saying. So you got toddlers. How do you still pursue your spouse? You got uh, teenagers playing multiple sports, driving taxi cab, mom, taxi cab dad all over this place. How do you still pursue your spouse? Um, because I think I'm hearing both of y'all say that, that you got, you have to continue to lean into each other um, and not let, you don't cohabitate inside of a house just as friends, uh, but you still have to pursue each other to keep that love cultivated. What are some practical ways uh, either y'all did pursue each other or you wish you would have, maybe maybe a little more emphasis, whatever, but some practical ways you can pursue your spouse during each season? You have to make it a priority. All right. It's a priority. I think um, Dana used to put notes in my like she would pack my lunch. So she put notes in my lunch box or <clears throat> excuse me, when, she, when I traveled, she would put notes in my suitcase and just tell me, you know, it's just little things. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Um, you know, and of course date night's important, taking time to, uh, to set aside for that person, whatever that looks like, even if it's at home after the kids are in bed, then, you know, we used to put our kids down pretty fairly early, like seven o'clock and, um, <laughs> Dana was always about a schedule. So, um, you know, that left an hour or two at night for us to to yeah. talk and talk about the day or or just sit and enjoy each other, watch the TV or whatever. But you've got to take some time for each other or else you'll you'll forget who each other are. That's good. Ron and Linda, how's some practical ways y'all pursued each other through the years? Well, one of the things that we've always tried to do is is to go to bed together. Instead of, you know, I'm more of a night owl. She's a little bit. And, and I like to go to bed late and get up early. And <laughs> I like to go to bed early and get up late. <laughs> yeah. but, but regardless, we always try to shut down and go to bed together. So sometimes I might go to bed earlier than I'd like, or sometimes she might go to bed later. But that way we have that time that we can just not have, we can have that time together just to, Sometimes we'll just lay there and she'll lay in my arms every night. Dude, come on. A romance <laughs> at the Lynn's house. Right? Well, I think it's so special. You don't realize what that means yeah. after 50 years. Yeah, that's awesome. You, know, you yeah. can't do that when you're angry at one another. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, it, and it's intentional. That's, that's the part that I think is so important is to realize Priorities don't happen in your life on accident. Priorities are fulfilled intentionally. And so I know Aaron and I, because we both live and die by communication with people over uh, with our phone or emails. Technology today has made everything so much more complex because you're accessible 24 hours a day. Uh, and the only way we can ever really prioritize each other is to turn our phone off and to go, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to to prioritize um, prioritize each other because so many couples, you can be in the same room, but you're in, uh, in two different spaces because you're on your phone or you're engaged in TV and all those things are great, but they can distract us uh, for sure. So um, good stuff. All right. Number five, um, what advice would you give a couple that isn't sure if their marriage is going to make it? There's not an option. I like it. Yeah. Divorce, divorce was never an option with us. Right. Um, if you if you have it as one of your options, then you're more likely to lean toward that. All right. Um, that's good. Uh, that's uh, that's basically what we said mm -hmm. when we were talking about uh, talking about this. You know, we never we said we committed early on that that just wasn't going to be in our mm -hmm. vocabulary. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to talk about that we were going to whatever it took is what we were going to do to to make things That's work right. yeah. and um you know that takes it takes a lot of forgiveness <clears throat> it takes a lot of work some days um but 
Um, but that was, you know, you said a, a mouthful. It's just not an option. Mm-mm. Right. That's good. I want to echo something I think sometimes is a battle that whether it's our own pride. Um, so those of you who are engaged with us in live stream, whether it's your own pride or the stigma, maybe sometime this round, but, but counseling is okay. Um, asking for help is okay. Uh, it's not, it doesn't mean that uh, you're a failure. It doesn't mean that um, you don't have faith. Sometimes even as a Christian, we go, Hey, if I just pray harder, then everything's going to get up. Get okay. Um, but sometimes you do need that practical uh, mentorship, that practical, another set of eyes, uh, just to talk things out. So counseling is okay. It's not a negative, uh, finding another couple like the Lenses, the Timmons, um, find another couple that, that can, can look you in the eye and, uh, Miss Linda say, Hey, you're being self. Sure. Right. Uh, we all need somebody who tell us the truth. Uh, so I think, um, divorce is not an option. Um, you know, there, there's very, very small window biblically where divorce is even a biblical uh, option that, that the Bible teaches us that it's okay. Um, but uh, in society today, it's, it's learning to love, learning to trust, learning to forgive, learning to um, just keep plowing on. So you guys are incredible and, and um, uh, really you're a, I don't say an anomaly, it's sad to say that long marriages are an anomaly nowadays, but uh, they're unique and they're special. And Iran, so I think the question everybody wants to know, what are you doing for a 50th anniversary? <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> well, we we had wanted to go to Europe, but obviously with everything that's going on, we've revectored and we're going to the national parks, Grand yeah. Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Yellowstone, just doing a kind of a national park tour yeah just whatever y'all flying or driving no uh, we're flying to phoenix and then we're going to go to grand canyon and end up in yellowstone and fly out of jackson hole wyoming come on that's awesome <laughs> and, uh, ted and danny y'all's big next milestone y'all got a few years to your 50th uh, yeah we'll start planning <laughs> I, I see for me it's not playing i'd start saving right now <laughs> yeah. uh, but Hey, I appreciate you guys. And uh, any of you who are watching via uh, the live stream, if we can ever serve you, your families pray for you. Uh, leave us a comment in the comment sections. And um, I know we didn't maybe hit every topic today, uh, but the, the I promise you the word of God is true. And uh, you can stand by it. And uh, if we can ever be a part and serve you or your family, please let us know. So God bless you. Uh, you have a great rest of your evening. All right. Da-da-da.